And in this video, I'll show you the two main reasons why there is a turbo failure in one of these 1.6 AGI engines. What are the two main reasons that cover roughly about 90% of all the turbo failures in the 1.6 AGI engines? What can you check? More importantly, how to prevent it? Stay tuned. This is my 1.6 AGI Peugeot Partner engine, 2007, roughly about 106,000 miles. And the number one reason for the failure of the turbos in these 1.6 AGI engines is the injector, a copper seal at the end of the injector, as this picture here shows one of these seals. And I will show you what to look for, what are the symptoms, and what are the reasons for these injector copper seals leading to turbo failures. So this is injector number one on my 1.6 AGI engine and, and the closest to the gearbox because it's easier to film. And what is the main symptom of failing injector seals? It's just a black tar around here where I'm pointing around here everywhere around the, the seat of the injector so you have a black tar around here everywhere. And it will be pretty black and hard carbon deposits. I can compare it only to tar. A bit of a closer look up. Again, this is just a zoom version. So you're looking for a tar around here everywhere around at the back of the injector around here everywhere around here there will be black tar something uh, like this on this picture so what is the connection between failing injector seal and blowing a turbo or turbo failure in these 1.6 HDI engines you might ask and that's a very reasonable question and here's the logic behind that. So when the injector seal fails, you've got exhaust gases and unburned fuel coming up the injector. There is a seal at the top of the injector, a rubber seal that seals the injector from the crankcase. This eventually, because this becomes a very black hard tar, this forces its way through the seal and contaminates the crankcase, contaminates the crankcase oil. This contaminated crankcase oil, these are sometimes, these are hard bits. So these hard bits in the crankcase, in the oil, eventually make their way to the turbo banjo board, the lower banjo board that's got a little mesh. I'll have a zoom up version of that, it's got a little mesh. This gets blocked and the turbo is starved of oil and then eventually the shaft or something else breaks because there is not enough oil to cool turbo while it's spinning. This is the top banjo boat and this is the oil feed pipe that goes from the crankcase. It looks, it looks something like this. Uh, it goes around there. This is the top, uh, the top banjo boat. And there is a bottom banjo boat here as well and that's the, that's the bottom banjo boat. So this banjo boat, the mesh on this banjo boat has a really small surface area and gets clocked very easy. This mesh was superseded by this particular filter that is much longer, it's plastic, not metal. This is from my one previous videos of replacing the 1.6 HDI in these engines and it looks like this. And the second main reasons for turbo failure or uh, turbo blow up in these 1.6 AGI engines is the use of incorrect oil and not frequent enough oil changes plus oil filter. In my booklet for the car it says every 12,000 miles or uh, one year, whichever comes first. Some people would just say, well I haven't driven in that year that much, I, I won't do an oil change. And this is really one of the biggest factors after the injected seals. What you need to do is use the correct oil. So for example, something like this. I'm using to tell uh, Quartzineo ECS. This is a fully synthetic oil, 5W30. So this oil is low in saps. So it's low in sulfated ash, phosphorus and sulfates. So in other words, it doesn't really contribute that much when there is some blow by, it doesn't contrib contribute too much to the carbon in the oil in the crankcase. So this is recommended by Peugeot and Citroen. I really recommend that. I've always used that one and never had a problem with my turbo. Second, of course, shorten the interval changes of the oil. Do it every six months or 6,000 miles, whichever comes first. And that's how you can all these soot from the oil, you can pull them out and the banjo ball won't get clocked and you have a happy turbo. So second part of the video, can you do something about these failing injector seals? Yes and no, and I'll try to explain. So here is the, the first stud nut, and there is one on the other side too, uh, from both sides. These eventually sometimes wiggle out due to the, the heat expansion, the contraction, aging and so on. So these eventually might lose themselves out. So what one can do is tighten these a bit. These are normally tightened 4 Newton meters plus uh, 65 degree and it's a kind of angular tightening so it kind of stretches the bolt slightly so you cannot really go nuts and just tighten this as, as hard as you can. You can do that, you might first time shear the bolt, you might not 
but eventually with tightening and tightening eventually this will these bolts will fail so what we can do is so this is seven millimeter allen key so you could put it quite there use a torque wrench and uh, tighten it to about seven newton meters I wouldn't recommend any more, probably about 10 Nm is the maximum that one can do. Or you can just check it with 6 Nm how tight this is, that bolt and that bolt and all two per injectors so or 8 bolts all together. So it's very easy to get to the front, these stud nuts to the front of the injectors, but the back is very difficult to get to the uh, behind this injector wiring loom. So one has to take that bolt, that bolt and one down there. I'll re remove that and show you how the bolts are. Of course one needs first to remove the connection for the injections, the electrical connection, so there are four. These three are the same, so I'll show one of these and then I'll show that one as well. So in order to undo the electrical component of the injector, I can have some plastic tool, lift this clip a bit and then just pull out. The most left one, or injector number four, is just a squeezy type, so you squeeze it here and pull it out. But it's a bit of a wiggle. Eventually you squeeze it, you squeeze it down here and eventually it comes out. Next is to undo that bolt and it's a 10 millimeter socket and a third bolt here which is also a 10 millimeter socket once all three bolts are removed this is just to give yourself a wiggle room rather than removing the whole thing so the fuel return pipe will be clipped by this clip so you have to pull it slightly move this aside then the next they're slightly broken on mine you kind of move it only slightly don't push it too much otherwise you might break these fuel lines and you kind of slightly wiggle it out you can also remove the MAF sensor if you want but it's just to give you a slight wiggle room just slightly push it and of course I have a I'll have a upper shot but you could now uh, this will go in there this seven millimeter allen key could go in there and you can tighten it slightly and for the others as well it's the same thing you just move it only slightly and then you can kind of access those so this is how the the two stud nuts look like one here and uh, one there uh, this is from from the top of the injector uh, one next to each other it's similar so here is the injector nut on the on the stud and do not really go crazy on those at all. These are angular tightened 4 Newton meters plus 65 degree. Uh, this is depending on different forums and so on is roughly about 7.5 Newton meters. So with my torque wrench I would do 6, you can't quite see it but this is a 6 Newton meter. So I'll just until it clicks. So this is quite tight, I know they are tight because I've tried them all. This is quite tight and I'll do the rest of them, check them if they are less than 6 Newton meters. So just checked all of my injectors, all 8 clamps and they are all more than 6, six uh, Newton meters torqued. So these are not loose, I mean I have no carbon deposit but I do check this once a year uh, to make sure that they haven't loosened themselves. Now of course you can go to higher than 6 Newton meters, you can go up to 10 Newton meters, that's probably about the maximum that these bolts would sustain so do not go anything above 10 Newton meters. If you, if you go anything above 10 Newton meters you're risking tightening it every time and eventually these, these bolts would snap. Of course fitting it back together the, you have to put this in back in place, the three bolts and the connection for the injectors. So if you already found tar around the injectors, straight away replace the injector seals. No matter how much you tighten them, you might potentially tighten them and leaking might stop 
but it's still better to replace this injector seal straight away. If you don't have any tar around the injectors or there might be a bit of a from oil for example from the oil filler cap there might be some oil it looks like a tar and it's not just oil so you can just wipe it off and see if it if comes up more. If it's not uh, there is not build up of tar definitely check this tightening of these stud nuts in order just to keep it in check and not to wiggle themselves out. So this is it these are the two main reasons why the turbos fail in these engines or why the turbos in the 1.6 AGI engine blow up. One is the injector seals, they either fail with age due to the heat cycle of the engine or the stud nuts loosen up a bit so the same thing the injector gets a bit loose so the gases and unburned fuel can get passed through they become this tar material, go through the oil seal and eventually end up in the crankcase oil congeal, they could be this they could turn into these carbon particles because this is really hard, this tar, and eventually they block the banjo bolt. Then of course they start off the turbo of oil and you get the blown turbo. The second primary reason is the use of incorrect oil and not frequent oil changes. Half the oil changes instead of every year, do it every six months or every 6,000 miles and use low sap oil. Use uh, fully synthetic low sap oil, so low in sulfated ash, phosphorus and sulfates because this is a sooty engine. It produces a lot of carbon, produces a lot of soot. So you want it as frequent as possible to draw out this carbon, not to stay there too long and block this banjo boat mesh. Some people might say, I haven't driven that yet that much. I only drove 3000 miles. I'm not gonna change the oil. Change it every six months or 6000 miles, whichever comes first. Then the turbo will be happy, the engine will be happy and you have a car to drive for a long time. Of course there could be other reasons for turbo failures but they are minor, so for example a foreign body could be introduced in the AI intake, hits the propeller of the turbo and this of course creates imbalances and then can break and the turbo could blow. So for example somebody was changing uh, the filter, introduced some uh, small bits and pieces and this spins with a huge amount of RPM and just a small particle could really hit it and this can blow out. So thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoyed that video, I really enjoyed making it. Let me know for any comments in the comment section. Hopefully that is useful to someone, how to avoid turbo failure in these engines. Thank you very much indeed for watching, hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it. Thank you, subscribe, let me know for any comments.